Hey friends, today I'm going to be talking to you about student trackers, how they work, and how you can use them successfully. I'm going to be sharing out some spreadsheet tips and tricks because um, in my opinion and my experience, spreadsheets are really the best uh, type of file to use for a tracker, especially for uh, digital tracking. If you're going to print them out, I still find that spreadsheets are the most functional. The features in a spreadsheet, if you're using a digital tracker, are super, super helpful because you can use conditional formatting. So I'm going to be showing you the trackers that I have developed. Feel free to use them to share them out with other teachers. I just ask that you leave the copyright tab on the bottom if you print them or share them digitally. All right, let's get started. Okay, right now this uh, is a blog on my website and it's titled what is a student tracker and how do I use it the ones that I am sharing with you are for uh, high school courses they are the EOC courses and these are specifically set up to go along with USA test prep which is a fantastic piece of software um, I I don't get any money from them for saying that but it is really a really good program so uh, the four I'm going to be sharing out are Algebra 1, Biology, English 2, and U.S. History and Constitution. All right, so if you want to read the uh, blog, you'll be able to find it at cultivatingthelearning.com slash student hyphen tracker. And you'd need to go there to be able to get the links to the digital trackers. So I'm going to... Uh, share out the English 2 EOC skills tracker and I want to show you this is programmed to force a copy so it's a Google um, it's a Google file it's in um, their spreadsheet Google Sheets and when you click on it it offers to make you a copy now I want to very quickly just show you how to do that so the first trick is if you have a file and you don't want people to have to go to file, make a copy, you can erase everything. Usually it will say blah, 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 edit. Everything back to this first slash, you erase it, and then you type the word copy. When you copy this link and share it out, this is uh, how it will look when the person clicks on it copy document and then you click on it and it will automatically make a copy for them. So if I click on this, it's not letting me because I'm in my thing. I'm just going to open it up here. This is what you're going to see. It's going to make you a copy and up here it will say copy of English 2 EOC tracker. Okay. And I've already taken the copy of off. So the first thing I want to show you are the tabs down at the bottom. These are called worksheets. The entire file is called a workbook, okay? So just like, just like you would on a paper workbook. So there are three tabs. This one is called English 2 EOC Track Horizontal. This one, and you'll notice the students run um, vertically, but the uh, standards run horizontally, or the skills, right? So this one, is the opposite. You've got the indicators running horizontally and then you've got the students. I'm sorry, I said that backward. You've got these, these are running vertically and the students are running horizontally. Okay. Now what I want to show you that I programmed is that right here is a tab for students. There are some directions right here for you that you can read on your own. But as I type in some people Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, and if you've been around me, you'll know that I am partial to Disney. <laughs> okay, now that I've put those three names in there, when I go to my tracker, you'll see that they automatically are there. And when I go to this one, they automatically are here. All right? These cells have already been formatted so that the names will turn sideways so that if you decide to print it's not taking up all of the page all right um okay so 
let's get to it. So I'm going to work with the horizontal tracker. You can use this digitally so that if you want to share it out with your students, you would take your, your blank uh, tracker and you would share it in Google Classroom, or you could do that copy trick that I just showed you. And you would share it out through Google Classroom or whatever LMS you're using. If an individual student is using this, then they could click on the student column and they could delete it. So I could right click and just choose delete column. They also don't need to tell you what block or period they're in. So they could just delete this column too. And then they're going to have these standards that they're trying to track. Okay. Now, if you're sharing it out with just one student, this one might be easier. And I might just delete this column here, delete that row. And now as a student, I am just tracking really one column. All right. So once I have met the recursive process, I can put an X in there. Once I know that I know how to develop a plan, I put an X in there. And this is for inquiry based literacy. Once I've proven that I can evaluate, I'm going to put an X in there. Okay. So that's how a student is going to be able to track him or herself. Now, if you want, you can remove all the coloring that is here by clicking on the top, by clicking on the top name of each column and dragging across. And then I can go up here to the paint can for fill color and I can just hit reset. And now there won't be any colors in here and you'll be able to see the X's a lot more strongly. Okay. Now, if you are sharing these out digitally for each student, ways that you can use them are to embed it in a Google site so that you can then check them to be able to um, find them, right? And check in on them. So you could create your own site and the students could share them with you and you could just add them to the entire site so you have them all in one place. If you share them out in Google Classroom though, as an assignment, make a copy for each student, they're all going to be in one folder anyway. And when you are looking for that folder, I'm just going to go to Drive and I'm going to show you your master classroom folder is called Classroom, right? And here's mine right here. And I'm going to double click on Classroom and open it up. Once you're inside classroom, these are your different classes that you've created. So if I go into my online class for teachers, these folders right here are the assignments that I have created. And as the, te the students, the learners click make a copy, once they hit make a copy, then their copy is going to be in this folder. So when you get new students to your class, you don't have to, they can just start at the beginning of classroom, right? And work their way through. And as they get to this assignment, their um, work will show up right here. Okay. So that's just another tip on how you can use these digital these trackers digitally if you're not going to use them digitally i want to show you what happens when you try to print so for each of these i have formatted them you can go to file and then go down to print you can also just hit the butterfly and p okay so here we are and they're automatically set to break at different points okay and also to um, keep the uh, keep keep the um, standards at the top. Now I'm going to switch over. I'm going to come out of this and cancel it because this only has 14 students. A lot of us don't have the pleasure of having only 14 students, so I want to show you in this one. Oh, this is a new copy of English 2. 
Hold on a second. Let me, where did my other one go? Okay, I'm going to add more columns here just so that you can see what I need you to see. Let's say I want to insert more to the right and then I want to insert more to the right again. Okay, now when I go into print, notice I have a lot of blocks, but I don't have, I can't see the standards on my second piece of paper. So what I want to show you is you want to go into formatting and, or no, let's see. You want to go into headers and then you want to choose repeat frozen rows and repeat frozen columns. Make sure those are checked off. And now I'm going to show you how to freeze them. So these two columns we want to show up on every single page. When we, um, to, because it needs to be frozen, we have to go up to view and then freeze. And then we want to freeze two columns. So when I slide to the right, the first two columns are frozen. So let me show you what happens now when I try to print it. When I print it here, my first page, can, you can see them. Now my second page, you can see them as well. So if these are student names across the top, I want to make sure that I know what this box stands for. So you have to make sure you freeze your rows. Okay, and then here are the green standards, I would call them, right? And then the last one. So we would have some formatting issues here that we need to play with, but um, I'll be teaching that to you in a, different, uh, in a different video. So for right now, I just want to show you that the students, if you decide to do um, reading literacy text first, then the students are going to be filling in these blocks first, right? and then they can fill in these, and then they can fill in these. It doesn't matter what order you go in, as long as the students know what they're supposed to be covering and what they're responsible for. So having a tracker allows the student to track him or herself, and then based on where they are, they know whether they need to ask for help, they know whether they need to come in for a mini lesson, right? When you, when you are having a mini lesson and you set everybody to work, then you can say anybody who has not um, met mastery for um, I 4.2 for evaluate and 4.3 communicate I need you up at the table because we are I'm going to be going over that right now another way that you can use these which is super positive is for you to have this posted on a wall and a lot of people are hesitant to do that because they think that it's public shaming but it's only public shaming if you use it for public shaming, right? The way that I have seen it used in classrooms is teachers use it as a, an I can help board. And if there's a student that has all of these filled in, and there's a student over here that doesn't have it filled in, whoever this student is in column C can go to student H and say, Listen, I've already mastered um, 4.2 and 4.3 and I see you haven't. Would you like for me to tell you what I know? Another way you can use it is to have tutoring time built into your schedule. And then if there are other students who have this done, then this student here can say it's tutoring time. I know that I can ask the person in column N, the person in column L, or the person in column C, if they would help me to figure out 4.2 and 4.3. So I worked with a math teacher in a charter school that was for students who were behind. So not a lot of overachievers. And he was very hesitant to put this up on the wall. He was algebra one. And I encouraged him to put it up on the wall and to use it positively. And he said that he put it up on the wall. And when he let the students themselves 
go up to the wall and fill in the blocks to show their own mastery, everything changed. He said that the students were so excited. They were so proud of themselves. And we're talking about pride here, not shaming. So it all depends on how you use it. Um, so if you, if you don't want to use it publicly and you want to give each student his or her own, by all means, go ahead and do that. This can also be reformatted as an individual um, uh, for individuals. So I might work on that and also post them. Um, if you're interested in that, just put a comment in the blog and let me know. And then if people show a desire, then I'll, I'll go ahead and work on that and post it. All right, so this is a digital tracker. This specific type is really for posting on the wall, um, but you can have other trackers that are just for individual students. Um, you can print them out if you want to and give them to students. You can use them digitally. If you use them digitally, I recommend using Google Sites uh, to have the kids add it to their portfolio, and then their portfolio becomes a digital notebook as well. You can also just use a site as a digital notebook, not as a portfolio, and you can also use Google Classroom and uh, assign it as an assignment and then make a copy for each student so that all of these will be contained in one folder for the teacher to have access to. And when you use Google Classroom that way, you have access to them. The second the student hits make a copy, you automatically have access to it. Okay. All right. And that's it. Good luck.